Uh, welcome. Good morning, everybody. Ed Lane. I'm a EXP managing broker out of Washington State. And today's training is about what I like to call the Moving Concierge Program. EXP has a partnership with a company called Curbio. Curbio is a national uh, general contractor. And uh, basically, the way you want to talk about this program to folks is hey, what if I could remodel your house with my money and you keep the profit? It's super compelling, right? And, and in the end, it will just depend on the condition of their home. But what I want to do today is kind of walk you through how we use this as part of a three-pronged approach so that we capture as many uh, seller leads as we can. So let me share my screen. And launch my PowerPoint. So, uh, again, for marketing purposes, we call it a moving concierge program. But you guys can see on the screen right now, the photos along the top are the after photos. And this is a real rehab that we did. And, and really, the whole thing is, if we spend a dollar, are we going to get a return on that dollar and sell it for more? And the advice I give to sellers is, you, you shouldn't allow us to do this unless there's a 40% ROI. So if I spend 10 grand, it should sell for 14 grand more. Or if I spend 100, it should sell for 140 grand more. Um, otherwise, don't do it. Just sell it as is, right? And that's, that's for two reasons. Number one, we want to make sure that there's reward in it for the consumer. But number two, we also want to have a bit of a buffer, a bit of a protection in case the market shifts while we're doing the work. Because as you might imagine, to go from this along the bottom to this along the top can take 10 to 12 weeks, right? So if I'm doing this and it's gonna be three months from now, is three months enough time for the market to shift? Absolutely, right? We saw in May of 2022, we saw it shift in a day when rates spiked, right? So, so we wanna have some protection in there in our numbers to make sure that if the market changes against us, it's still going to be a money maker, right? It's still instead of a forty percent ROI, maybe it's fifteen, but it's still a money maker. Does that make sense? And the other part of it is homes like the photos across the top are going to sell faster as well, right? So let's let's dive in. We're going to talk about how. In meeting with sellers, we talk about three options when we're meeting with them. Cash, sell it as is on the market, or sell it as repaired, as repaired as the moving concierge version. And then we'll do a deeper dive on moving concierge specifically. Um, and then I'll walk you through what the steps are if you were going to work with Curbio, because it's actually pretty straightforward. And then we'll finish up with how you might find some more listings. Anybody on the call like to find more listings right now? Right. So we'll, we'll dive in. Right. So what we like to do uh, when we meet with a seller is explain to them that we have three different ways we can sell their home. We can bring them a cash offer tomorrow. We can sell it as is on the MLS. Or we can sell it as repair using our moving concierge program. And it's with that three pronged attack that they are then convinced, well, uh, why do I need anybody else, right? If, if Ed or Steve or, or Galen can do these three approaches, all three of them, I don't need to talk to anybody else, right? I literally had a gentleman ask me when I walked him through this, as I'm sitting in his, it's just this little condo, but, but it was dated. And I walked him through it and he goes, Ed, which one of these do I get you? And I go, well, Jack, I got bad news. You get me with all three. And he's like, right on, man, let's go. So the, the other cool thing about doing this approach is it allows you to sign them right then and there. They will sign the paperwork in order to find out what all are all the numbers, right? Because the cash offer is going to be the lowest of the three final sales prices. The as repaired is going to be the highest. But you also need to know what's the scope of work, how much uh, time is it going to take to do the work, et cetera, on the moving concierge part of this. So think of it like this. The, the three options are a continuum of price, right? 
cash is the lowest, as is, as repaired. They're also a continuum of convenience, cash being the highest convenience, as is, but on the market is less convenient because now they got to deal with photos and showings and all that and open houses, right? And then as repaired is the least convenient because they might have to move out depending on the size of the project, right? So uh, it's then up to them to decide what's the trade-off, right? And when you can boil it down to concrete numbers, and we'll get into how you do that, then it's an easier decision for them, right? They can go, oh, so if I put up with some inconvenience, I can get $60,000 more. I'm going to do that. Or 160 or 360 or whatever, right? So uh, when you explain it like that and you demonstrate to them that you have the ability and skill to deliver on all three approaches, they are then going to feel like, I don't need to talk to anybody else. And just if, if you're with EXP, I know this is kind of a non-denominational approach, but if you're with EXP, what that means is the cash offer is the express offers platform. So if you're not express offers certified, get certified so that you can add this arrow to your quiver as is, that's just right down Main Street. That's what we all know how to do, hopefully. And if you don't, I'll give you a link to a great training that we do for listings, just generic listings, right? And then as repaired is Curbio. So EXP is partnered with Curbio. Curbio partners with all sorts of companies. So if you're with a different firm, ask about it, look them up, right? But I can tell you personally, I've done probably over three dozen of these projects, as small as a $12,000 cleanup, paint and landscape job that delivered $83,000 more money, right? So that's what, a 600% ROI. I've also done uh, $300,000 gut job remodels that then, I'll show you some photos later, uh, that particular one, we did a $300,000 remodel that sold for 415,000 more than it would have. So that seller netted 115,000 extra dollars. And all he had to do was say, okay, go ahead. Didn't have to pull in any money out of his pocket. Didn't have to do anything. It was his mother's house. He didn't even have to move. She passed away and it was, you're going to see the photos. It was terrible. So it's a really elegant way to help people. And it's dependent on the condition of their home, whether they would benefit right, from it, right? So uh, that's really the only reason why you should use this approach is give them three options so they don't have to talk to anybody else, all right? So cash offers, we talked about listed as is, you guys know, uh, express offers. The way I market this when I'm talking to a seller is, Hey, what if I could get you a cash offer by tomorrow? We have a marketplace of hedge funds and I will get them to bid against each other for your home. What impression do you think that leaves in the seller's mind? Like, oh man, he's going to get them to bid against each other. I'm probably going to get even more than market value for my house, right? That's, that's where their brain goes. And I'm letting it go there. I'm not going to discourage them from that. I want them to, to oh, you know, have faith in that. In the end, if they don't like the number, they don't have to accept it. That's the, the other best part of all of this is it's non-committal. So they can hire you. And if you're on my team, we actually give sellers a cancellation agreement. So what it says is you can fire me at any time. And then we make a joke about, please don't fire me. This is how I feed my family. But the beauty of that cancellation agreement is twofold. Number one, makes it easier for them to sign the listing agreement, right? Because they know they can get out of it. And number two, it puts their pen in their hand. So I, I put the easiest thing to get them to sign in front of them first. And now I've got the pen in their hand for the rest. Does that make sense? So in this process, they're going to say, well, but how much is the cash offer? Let's find out together, right? We have to go in express offers. We go through a process. It's not labor intensive. It's shoot photos, get them to sign the express offer agreement, which just says if he accepts the cash offer, we get paid. And if he doesn't, he doesn't have to pay anything, right? But that allows you to put it into the marketplace, get, get offers, 
oftentimes more than one, right? And then figure out which one's the, the highest and best offer for them. I'll tell you, the cash offer, or the express offer model, I've used it, I've actually submitted probably a dozen or more properties through it. I've only closed one, but that's not a disappointment for me because the, what the cash offer does is it cements in the consumer's mind, well, shoot, I want more than that. I will put up with the inconvenience of listing it, or I will put up with the inconvenience of a, of a remodel, right? So it sort of drives them into my arms, if that makes sense. But it, it's an important step because a lot of people would prefer a cash offer. And the other cool thing that happens when I do this, because it's gone into a marketplace of hedge funds, and they are disappointed, let's assume it was a low number. Because remember, investors are typically going to pay 70% of market value, right? 10% for repairs, 10% for commissions, 10% for profit. So that's why they tend to offer 70 cents on a dollar. So when that express offer comes in, even if it's multiple offers, they're all in and around that vicinity. Well, now they, they're like, nah. I want to get more money, so I'm going to work with Ed to put it on the open market. And they stop paying attention to all the texts and emails and phone calls from the We Buy Ugly Houses people, right? Because everybody gets inundated by those, even when your house is immaculate and, you, and you're not looking for a low ball offer, right? So it, it helps sort of hedge against that. Anyway, let me get back on track here, right? So... Uh, we can have the offer using that system within 24 hours. The, the Again, the benefit we would communicate to the seller is you don't have to do any repairs. You don't have to deal with any showings. And, and you, can only, you only have to pay half the commissions, right? Because in that example, there's no buyer's agent. You're just going to get your fee, whatever it is, 3% to whatever, right? If you were with EXP, get Express Offer certified. It's a class. It's online. It's only four hours in length. And now you can market yourself as Express Offer certified. It's a worthwhile uh, time, you know, expense or expenditure of your time, right? Option two, as is, well, you guys all know how to do that, right? That's get a sign in the yard, cue box on the door, clean it up, depersonalize it, declutter, stage it, do whatever you're going to do. Uh, if you're not skilled at that, go to theagentcollective.com and look up uh, our listing presentation. And you can watch a video on how we present to sellers and all the things that we do. Jesse, who organizes the Agent Collective, actually did a series of, it, of us, right? So there's not just me. There's multiple top producing agents that have shared what they do. And you can go watch them all and then come up with your own if you want. Right. So, so just practice. It's a, it's a skill that you will learn over time. Right. And then option three is moving concierge. The, these two photos are literally the same kitchen, if you can believe that. Right. I mean, this, this was not a foreclosure, though it looks like one. It was a tenant occupied with a crappy tenant that beat the hell out of this poor guy's property. So we came in and made it nice, right? Are we the only ones that do this? We're not. There are other companies that offer some version of this, but I'll tell you some differentiators for us. With EXP, there's no limit on the budget. That is a huge differentiator because the competitors, you know, like um, Compass does this, they have a $50,000 cap. Uh, there's other companies here regionally in Washington, like uh, Windermere and John L. Scott, they do it, but it's 3%. They, they only risk whatever they're going to make. Well, 50 grand is, is bigger than 3% in most cases, but even with 50 grand, I can't do much. I used to be a general contractor. I can tell you, especially today, $50,000 doesn't go very far. So to be able to come in behind that same agent and say, I have an uncapped budget is a huge differentiator, right? We, we actually went behind a compass agent on a property and the co here's another good tip for you. You know, I know Steve on this call used to be, or still is a contractor. 
most of the agents that are pitching it for those other companies, they've never flipped a house for profit. I have multiple houses. So do you think the advice I give to sellers might be different than somebody who's never done it? Absolutely, right? We went in behind a, an agent who told this seller that, and they had a $50,000 cap, that we were going to use 27000 of that cap on new windows. And then that would leave the other 23000 to spruce things up. I came in and said, you don't need new windows. Look at these comps. None of the comps have new windows. Let's spend the money on the things that people want in this neighborhood, right? That's part of the advice that you should be giving if you're doing this is look at the as repaired comps and see what the finish quality is. Match that. Don't exceed that, right? I had this conversation yesterday with an investor and he was really concerned. And when I told him, oh no, we, we would never over improve a property. We just want to mirror what the neighborhood is, because that's what buyers are looking for when they come to that neighborhood. They're not looking for Brazilian cherry hardwoods and ports. They're looking for fill in the blank. So that's what we're going to do. Does that make sense? So, uh, so when you're doing this, you can brag about how you have an uncapped budget. I'm sorry, I stopped sharing my screen and resharing it, but I like looking at you guys when I'm talking. Uh, I'm working on one right now. You want to know what the budget is? 1.6 million. The rehab is 1.6 million. Do you think Compass can compete with me on that? With a $50,000 cap? Hell no. That's what, when I say unlimited, it's literally unlimited. It's just a function of will that 1.6 million deliver 2 million in higher sales price? And in this case, the answer is yes. So this probably, I haven't asked the Kirby rep, but I think this will be a record breaker if we do it. Um, so I think I've dwelt dwell, dwelled, dwelling, whatever. Spend too much time on this, right? We are the best, though, most diverse and highest allowable budget. So I beat that drum enough. So what can be done? Anything, literally anything. I have used some of the budget to pay for uh, an apartment for the occupant of the house because they had to move out. It's not just for paint and landscaping and all that, right? The numbers just have to work. So be creative if you have to. All right. No cat, what you do, 1.6. This, this is the building that has the $1.6 million scope of work. That's a nineplex. But it's as is value is, is about two and a half million. And when we're done, it'll be 5 million. Pretty sweet, right? So what are the steps? How do you do this? Uh, the cool part is your client doesn't have to spend any money on it, but you start by shooting photos. I shoot between 70 and 100 photos of every house I go into. And I tell the consumer, do you mind if I shoot photos while we take a look around? Oh, God, no. It's not clean. You know, whatever. Some people react sort of viscerally to that. And I go, no, no, no. This is just for me, for my memory, right? So I can remember what I saw. None of these photos will ever see the light of day on the internet. And they go, oh, okay, yeah, go ahead. So I shoot all the photos. I determine the scope of work and I can help you do that. Or if you have a background in construction or know somebody that does, you can do it yourself or design, right? So you're just trying to figure out, okay, does this place need new counters? Does it need new cabinets, et cetera? Then sign the listing agreement and tell them if, if they're interested to find out what the numbers are, you have to hire me. And don't worry, I'm going to give you this cancellation agreement. So if you don't like the outcome, you can fire me. Does that sound fair? That's a, a phrase I say all the time. Does that sound fair? Because the average human doesn't want to be unfair, doesn't want to treat anyone unfairly. So when you say, does that sound fair? They're more likely to say yes, because they don't inherently don't want to be unfair, right? So we get them to sign, then we submit it to Curbio. 
It's literally just an email that says, hey, here's a new one. Here's a link to the photos. I have a templated email I can show you guys, but it's, here's a new one. Here's the address. Here's the owner name. Here's their mortgage balance because their equity position does play a part in all of this. Here's a link to the photos. And here's what I'm recommending as a scope of work. I think this place needs carpet, paint, interior, exterior, paint, uh, flooring, whatever, right? And then with that information alone, Kerbio will put together a quote, not binding, and it's not a final quote, but it's a ballpark number. So what you want to do when you're meeting with the consumer and you're getting them to sign everything is say, okay, now from here, I'm going to go get us the initial quote. It won't be the final, uh, you know, final numbers, but it's going to be a ballpark of the numbers. And if the numbers still appear to pencil, then we'll get final numbers. And again, final numbers are still non-binding until you accept them. So you'll get to see what they are and decide, okay, do I want to proceed? And here's another dialogue that's really important. In the end, when we get all the numbers, it's very important that you agree with the as-is valuation and the as repaired valuation. Because if you think that I'm nuts when I say this place, once we do the work, will be worth $5 million, we need to talk through that. And that means I haven't done a very good job of demonstrating why it's going to be worth more, right? So get really good at pulling comps for both the as-is CMA and the as-repaired CMA so that when you have these conversations, you can demonstrate to somebody this is the effect on the sale price of your home if we put in new cabinets, counters, paint, flooring, whatever. Does that make sense? It's really important that they buy in, right? So once we've submitted it to Curbio, they send back the initial numbers. If we like the initial numbers, they are then going to ask to schedule a Matterport photography session. And here's the cool thing. You don't pay for the Matterport, and neither does your client. Curbio does. Curbio has staff, staff photographers with Matterport cameras, and they send them out. Here's the reason why they're willing to go to that expense. A Matterport image, hopefully you guys have all seen that, you know, the 360 degree sort of dollhouse view uh, images. You can take measurements from those images that are exact. So if we put together photos and say we need carpet, paint, et cetera, with the Matterport, they then can figure out exactly how much carpet, paint, flooring, counters, et cetera. Does that make sense? Now, from the Matterport, they can give us the final numbers, and they put that in a contract form, and they organize a Zoom meeting just like this with you and your client, and they walk us through the bid. And if everything looks acceptable, they send the bid for signing and they get started. I got one going on right now. I think they're actually paving a driveway today for a client who had a crappy, pitted, gravelly driveway. And that's going to help it sell for more, right? So uh, it's a pretty easy process. Start to finish, you can do it in less than a week, really, if if... The Matterport photographer is available to shoot it pretty quickly and your client makes decisions quickly. More, more often, it's a couple weeks, you know, because sometimes your client will want to think about it. The other thing to remember is your client can also say no to stuff. But just as the expert in the valuation part of this process, you have to be prepared to say, well, let me look into what not doing that is going to do to the value. And then they go, oh, I forgot about that, right? Because they don't think of it as having an impact on the value. They just think of it as, oh, but my driveway is nice. Why do we need a new driveway, right? Or whatever. So just be prepared to adjust. You know, if, if, if they want to pull things out, they can do that. And if, if they do that, you need to be able to show them, well, that now your house is going to sell for 40 grand less. And that driveway is only 19,000 bucks. Are you sure you want to pull that out? Right? 
get final numbers, and include the time frame. This is actually a really important part of this, right? Because as you guys all know, in the winter, the market slows, right? So if the market, if the project is 12 weeks, let's say, and we're starting it in August, 12 weeks is going to take us to September, October, November, right? Do you want to put the hole on the market on Thanksgiving weekend? No. Galen is emphatic, right? So I'll give you a great example. I did one last year. We met in August. They said, we don't want to list until after September. And, they, and that sentence ended with a comma because the, I was not the first agent they spoke with. So they said, we don't want to list until after September. And we know that's stupid, but we don't care because our do- we have two daughters. They're both getting married. We have all this travel. We just don't want to deal with it. And I said, that, it's no problem. I sell homes in all 12 months of the year. In fact, December is my number three highest volume month. So I'll be encouraging if that's the circumstance or discouraging if they have the financial ability to wait until January, that could be prudent. Well, in this case, we were gonna do a moving concierge project, about 83 grand, and the house was free and clear. So they were like, yeah, we could wait till January. And I said, okay, well then let's drag out the moving concierge project and just finish it at the end of December so that we can go on the market in January. And just a side tip, the third Thursday of January is a home run day to go live on the market. Every third Thursday of January, every year, I put multiple homes on the market on the same day. And here's the the reason why. I usually have a dialogue somewhere in October, November, December with the homeowner that says, well, you know, if, if you're not in a financial position where you need to sell sooner and can wait until January, here's why you might want to. You know, spring comes sooner to buyers than it does to sellers. And the reason for that is they wake up on New Year's Day hungover and they're watching football and they got the MLS in their pocket and they decide, you know what? This year, I'm going to buy a house. And they start looking right then and there. And what ends up happening is you start to build this wave of buyers that accumulates. And we like to go on the market on, the, on a Thursday, every, any time of the year. Thursday is the best day. But the third Thursday of January, you can start picking off buyers that are on the leading edge of that wave of buyers that are coming into the market. And you'll, you'll sell ahead of the sellers who are waiting until March or April because spring is the time to sell, right? That, that house, $83,000 project, it sold for $255,000 more than it would have had we not done the work. And that owner, he was a Boeing engineer. If you guys know Boeing is up here in Seattle. Super stoic, never said a word to me. I talked to the wife the entire time, even though he was sitting there. He just never said anything for months. Then he called me after closing and all he said was, man, were you right? You nailed it. And it was because of the momentum that I predicted, right? But I predict that every year. So write that down. Keep that in your hip pocket, right? All right. So the time frame you got to be considerate of that in case it affects you know when you're going to go on the market and if everything is a go you you flip the the switch screen and you go some things to remember right consider the timing of the completion date curbio is really good at at finishing when they say they're going to they are not the fastest though i'll i'll show you in fact let me show you this now this is a project uh let me find the, right here. So here's the before images of a project. My computer apparently is slow. Trying to get inside. I told you I take a lot of photos, right? This is the renter who destroyed the house. Uh, 
I think you've seen enough of that. This is the afters. Spent 85 grand to do this. It's a small house. And it's sold for about 150,000 more. Because remember that the before photos, that buyer is going to think, well, I'm going to have to spend this much money. And that's always a, a high number. So then they deduct it off their offer, right? Here's another one that, uh, let me find that images. I don't know. Really. That's the before image. This was a $300,000 remodel. Unfinished basement. Dated old. You see the debris right there? That's because tree limbs were coming through the roof like darts. All over the second floor was just pitted with these holes. Because it's deep in the woods, right? You know how long it took us to do this $300,000 remodel? Three weeks. And here's the afters. Now, this was when I was the GC. So three weeks, because I have a big crew, wasn't a big deal. With Curbio, this would have been three months. So that was a little bit of an adjustment for me to get used to. But it's not a big deal as long as you know what the number is and you can rely on it and you communicate it to your client, right? If your client's like, okay, so you said eight to 10 weeks, that's going to mean we're going to list it in September. Is that a bad idea? I'll give you another quick dialogue that we use for September listings. Hey, you know, a lot of people push to uh, get their homes before the school year starts, right? But one thing we've seen every year is the two weeks after Labor Day, there's an increase in transaction volume. There's a bump. So we can take advantage of that. But let's hurry, right? Another little dialogue we use is every, every week sooner is better than a week later. So let's push, but don't kill yourself, right? All right, I'll go back to the... I know I'm running a little bit long, I apologize. Hopefully, it's worth it, right? <laughs> uh, you have to have your listing ready to go within a week of completion. There isn't a deadline for payment. So Curbio will be patient if it takes you a while to sell the asset. That's a good thing. That's also a niche for them. Some of the other companies call it due if you haven't sold within four months or three months. That could be a problem, right? As the market changes. Here's just some recent examples. I mentioned the, the one from last September. We did 83,000. It sold for 255 over. I had one that was 12,000. It sold for 88,000 over. That's a 733% ROI. Had a different one. That was, this is the one I just showed you with that had the, the tree limbs through the ceiling. $277,000 rehab sold for 415,000 more money. And the seller gets to keep the difference. And you, you know, you say it like rehab your house with our money and you keep the profit, but you want them to feel like they're investing their equity because you're, you're going to, Curbio has to be paid whether they sell it or not. I have, a, I have another one that was supposed to go on the market later this year and the, the husband got ill and he said, I don't. I can't move. And I'm like, don't worry. And they felt terrible. They're like, we're putting you out. We put you through all this. And now we're not going to sell, at least not today. Doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is what matters to you. What is your goal? What's the most important outcome for you? And that should be your health, right? So am I going to sell it later? Of course. Like that response just cemented our relationship more 
am I bummed that I'm not listing it this month or next month? Of course. But it, am I going to tell them that? Of course not, right? Galen, you have your hand up. Would you, do you have a question? I have several. So um, yeah. if, if Curbio comes in and does the Matterport, do they have to go turtle depending? Do they have to do it once they do the Matterport or what? No, no. If, if the numbers don't pencil after they do the Matterport, you just say, shoot, we're just not going to proceed. And, and the cool thing is matter or Curbio is out of the picture at that point, but you're still the listing broker. You're, they're just deciding to sell it as is if the numbers don't, you know, pencil. And they, they get to decide too, right? It's not just you. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it is their decision, not yours. And so that client that had to wait because of health, it, they had already had the Curbio remodel or they hadn't done that yet. They had already started it. It wasn't completed, but um, they're going to. They're, so their their question of me was, "What should we do? Should we stop them?" Because he fell ill overnight with some uh, condition that he's had in the past. So they know this is going to be bad for like a couple months or whatever. Yeah. Um, and I said, "Well, here are your options. You can let Kirby o finish, in which case." If you don't list it, you would need to pay them within 30 days. You can tell them to stop work. You'd still have to pay them within 30 days for what they've done thus far. But that could reduce the amount. Or we can let them finish. And in these next 30 days while they're finishing, if your health improves, you might stay the course. I don't, I don't know how long this affliction is going to last. And they... Fortunately for them, they have the money. So they were like, well, let's do numbers one and three. Like, we'll plan to let them finish because we would enjoy the work they're going to do anyway, right? That's the driveway people. So we'll, we'll let them finish so then we can live in this home. It'll be nicer for us. And if he improves, we'll list it. But if he doesn't, we'll just pay him and, and stay and then hopefully list you know, later next spring at the latest is kind of the mindset. So if Curbio, if Curbio does the work and you list it and it takes four months to sell, are there, are they accumulating interest on that loan? Curbio? No, there's, there's no provision of interest while it's listed. They just want to see that it's actively listed and being marketed. It's really pretty generous, you know, like I, I charged more for the service when I was doing it myself. Very they, cool. Yeah, they fall under different regulatory uh, requirements if they charge interest, right? Because now they're acting as a finance company and that brings in a whole nother slew of regulations. So they would just rather get their money when it sells. Um, and who knows, you know, if the market tanks, they might decide to change their approach or make an adjustment, but that's the approach today and it hasn't changed. I joined EXP two and a half years ago. So prior to that, I was doing it myself. So I've only been using them for two and a half years. But in that time frame, I've done seven or eight of these and uh, and it's gone smoothly. And how there, do you get back up with them? Uh, you just go into workplace and get the contact for your market. For here in Washington, it's Rajesh is his name. And you literally just send him an email and say, I got a deal. Can you take a look and give me some preliminary numbers? Claire, you have your hand up. So what is the equity position like minimally? Like that obviously they have to have as much, but twice as much or like as the... Um, yeah. So uh, 20, 20% equity or greater is the minimum. And they can't, they also cannot be in foreclosure. Okay. And then you said, I mean, no matter how long it's on the market, they, as long as it's on the market, they're not trying to collect. Is that what you said? Or did I not yeah. understand? No, no, that's, that's what their policy is. I don't know if that's, I'm sure it doesn't say no matter how long, but, uh, they, they don't charge 
They just want to know that it's actively marketed. Great. All right. Cool. Thanks. And just on an aside, how much do you think a driveway costs to replace? That particular one is about 45 feet in length. They're just doing blacktop. So it's only 19 grand. Um, if you wanted to replace a driveway in a neighborhood where blacktop would not be accepted, you're probably looking at uh, two to three times that for concrete. For just a regular two car driveway? Yeah. Wow. I mean, how long? Like 25 foot? Just regular subdivision house, right? Yeah, probably 25 or 30 grand. Wow. Okay, cool. Uh, right. There's a great tool. If you guys have all heard of Kelly Blue Book, they have a product called Blue Hammer. And the cool thing about Blue Hammer is you can get current pricing for projects in your zip code that, that are relevant to your zip code. So driveway might be less expensive where you are, Claire, but if you use Blue Hammer, it'll tell you. Thank you. That's cool. Yeah. All right. Let me make sure I haven't skipped anything because I know we're right a little, little bit long. Oh, yeah. The listing agreement. So when you show the homeowner that you have every option, I think I've beat that drum enough. Let them know that in order to get the numbers finaled for any of the approaches, they got to hire you because you have leverage. Hey, I did. I did that. Uh, it only went 12 minutes long. So I apologize. Any questions, though? Any other questions? Was this helpful? And do you feel like you've added another tool to your tool belt? Absolutely. It's been great. I, I mean, I can't tell you how many times they've said, well, you know, Galen, I have three ways I can sell your house. I can bring you a cash offer tomorrow. We can sell it as is and market it over the broader market. Or we can sell it as repaired using what I call our moving concierge program. And they go, ooh, what is that? And the best part is when you walk in their door, the first time you meet any seller, you're assessing them for timing and motivation, and you're assessing the property for condition, right? So I might, in talking to you, figure out the cash offer is the best thing for you because you're freaking out about something, right? A divorce, a death, a birth, maybe you're pregnant with quadruplets and you're freaking out, right? That, that's fine. I can bring you a cash offer tomorrow. And if, if you guys are in a state where uh, Open Doors partnership with EXP works, they, they don't do Washington yet, so we don't have this, but you can literally get an Open Door offer before you even go to the meeting. So leverage that, right? But um, in that conversation, we're figuring out of those three choices, which one works best for you? I might need, I'm not even sure if Open Door worked here that I would come with an offer because I like to two-step it, but get them to sign on the first step. And, and needing to sign to get the numbers is part of how I get them to sign. So if I brought the number with me, I don't want to disappoint them on day one, right? They're less likely to hire me. So anyway, play with that, test it. I test everything. All right. Steve, you came off mute. Quick, quick question. Any marketing support for promoting this sort of this concierge service? Yeah. Uh, if you go into a workplace, Curbio has some marketing collateral. They have a bunch of before and after stuff that they, they have. Um, I've created a website. I'll show you guys the website I use. Um, again, if you're with eXp, we have unlimited websites through KV Core. So this is just a KV Core landing page. And I just bought the URL edsmovingconcierge.com. Remodel your home with our money and you keep the profit, no strings, wide range of budget, professionally licensed modding contractors, complete analysis of as is versus as repaired, distressed property, no problem. Now that qualifier to that is can't be in foreclosure. So, but distress, takes a lot of forms, right? The stress doesn't always mean behind on your mortgage. And I, to be honest, Steve, I haven't really used any of the marketing collateral that, that Curbio provides because it has Curbio branding on it. And I want Ed branding on my stuff. Yeah, for sure. 
Have you gotten people to come in the door through that web page? Yeah. Yeah. And I uh, promote it on social media and stuff. Ed, I have a quick question. Yes. Um, I was similar to you. I'm I'm not a general contractor, but I have, you know, a big team and I was using my own money up front to renovate properties. How did this relieve, uh, what pain points did this relieve for you? Yeah, I mean, uh, as you probably know, when you start getting multiple projects going at the same time, it can stretch you pretty thin. Uh, I would have to pass on projects if they were too big and I had other projects going or whatever. So the economic impact of not having to use my own money was, was awesome. And, and I, I did have it structured when I was using my own money so that if it cost me 20 grand to do the work, I would get a management fee. So I would get 23 grand back or whatever. Right. So I lost that, that part of the income but I was able to do more deals and the real estate commissions in the end were more money anyway. So, um, control, probably the other thing, you know, like I pointed out that, that, that one project we did in three weeks, it would have taken them three months. But again, I don't, I mean, the first one, when I've did my first Curbio deal, I was a little bit shocked only because I didn't really realize how fast we were. That was more the shock than how slow they are. And all I had to do was change my thinking and go, okay, well, it is what it is. And if, unless I want to use my own money, I'm, I just have to deal with it. And what I found was after doing a dozen or, you know, six or seven of these with Curbio is the consumer doesn't care as long as they know, right? And it is in the, in that final contract, it says doll, line item by line item, here are all the costs, here's the total, and here's how long it's going to take. And then we just look at a calendar and go, okay, if it took that long, where would that leave us to go on the market? And the other thing is you guys all want to act somewhat like a project manager so that you can tell how close are they to completion so you can start lining up your photographer and your stager or whatever. So it has to go on the market within a week of completion. I had one that didn't and it wasn't like I didn't get my hand slapped or anything. We just communicated. Hey, you know, the photographer can't get out there until Thursday. We don't like to go live except on Thursday. So I just want to let you guys know we're going to go live next Thursday. And is that acceptable? Because if they had said no and there was going to be some penalty for my client, we could have gone live on Friday. I just would prefer not to. So anyway, um, it's, it's a pretty slick deal. And I like not having to use my money. Hey, who decides what gets done on the house? Does Curbio do that 100%? They make recommendations. You will make recommendations. In the end, it's your client's decision. Uh, there, there's other, another thing that your client can do, and I've, I've only had this happen once, but sometimes your client will say, hey, I, I love everything you're recommending, but my brother-in-law is a painter. Can we steer him the work? And Curbio says that's no problem at all. They will charge a 20% markup on your brother-in-law's work. And that's, you know, just how they do it. So uh, the consumer then just decides. I, I have had people ask that more than once, but the other people went, oh, well, forget it. We'll use his guy. I might not need to steer it to my brother-in-law. Any other questions or should we call it a wrap? There, just one more question. Because um, uh, the other question I was going to follow up with was the project management piece and how much of it is Curbio doing and how much can you actually see what's happening in the process? You're along for the ride in a lot of ways. Uh, they assign a project manager. So here in Seattle, there's two or three people that live here that work for Curbio and that's their job as project managers. So I've, I've met them. I met two of them. I think there might only be two. Um, and so that's their job. Technically, you're more of a quarterback because you just want to make sure you're tracking. Okay. How is everything happening nicely? Is my client happy? You know, like, um, this, this one with the driveway, the, the landscape guy was supposed to show up on day one to give the bid and he no showed. And my client, you know, 
what a terrible first impression, right? You just said yes to this very well organized and and very detail oriented program and agent and and everybody's like gone locked in and and then the first guy that they're going to deal with doesn't even show up. So I I didn't send a scathing email, but I pinged the project manager and I said, "We're not making a good first impression here and I I built you guys up big." And I told I said, "You know, I don't, you and I haven't met yet, but I'm a former GC and blah blah blah." And, and he wrote me back. He goes, he goes, the guy was literally in a car accident and I'm sorry, um, but I get it because I was a GC too and I know how important that first impression is. I'll, I'll make sure they feel covered, right? So then they have an app that kind of details everything and you can see all the exchanges between your clients and the project manager. So I saw the, the message he sent to them and it was perfect. It was apologetic and explanatory and said he was going to make it right. And unfortunately, it was just unforeseen events kind of thing. So you you get to track it as closely as you want. And you can even visit the job site every day if you want, and but you don't have to. All right. Well, thank you all for hanging out with me. And I'm sorry we ran a little bit long, but... Um, I'm going to go ahead and jump off. If if you guys have questions, I'll I'll put my email in the chat. You're certainly welcome to uh, ping me. And, and I would be happy to help if I can spell my own email, apparently. So have we're a not, wonderful day. We're not sad that it went over. Thank you so much, Ed. Thanks, oh, yeah, Ed. Galen. Nice to see you. Thanks for your kind words. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye. If you'd like more information or to get connected to the Agent Power Huddle, join our free Facebook group. This call was designed for the agents in our EXP organization, but open to any agent from any brokerage. If you're a guest and you're interested in learning more about EXP or our specific resources within the Agent Collective, reach out to the person who invited you to this call to get more info. Produced by the Agent Collective Media Network.